Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Deb and this is DB Designs and Sewing Australia. Glad to have you here. Just going to go through my two makes for the week and then after that I'll tell you about a Nerida Hansen event I will be attending. So first of all I've made two all-in easy fit shirts. What a surprise. So the first one I made was for one of my daughters and this is in that terrible fabric that is so hard to sew but when she saw my shirt she wanted one so I have made her a shirt and she wanted it as an over shirt she wanted to wear over things not just wear it as a shirt and so I've done fancy cuffs so they're much longer cuffs and they've got one button so you can turn it up Oops. and give that nice effect like that. I will insert photos as I go and I made it with the collar stand. In fact, I made both the shirts with the collar stand and what I mean by that, if you don't know what that means, here's one that I've made that didn't have a collar stand and so as you can see, sometimes called a camp collar. And so the collar just joins directly to the shirt rather than having the extra piece here, which is a stand, which is my preference because it means that you can get basically your collar shirt to stand up. And I'll often wear my shirts like that or with a scarf around the collar stand so it stands right up or with a jumper over it. If you get wear a jumper over it and you want your collar to stand up out of the jumper, having a collar stand um, can be really helpful with that. So this is mine. Mine is in a white sailcloth. Now it's quite a heavy fabric, but I wanted a really crisp um, white shirt. So as you can see, it's very, very crisp iron to within an inch of its life but really really happy with this fabric really happy with it i think this is the sixth and seventh of these shirts i've made so that's an all-in easy fit shirt by pattern emporium it's a fabulous pattern um i guess you have the option of doing a box pleat at the back or an inverted pleat which are just the opposite to each other so on one side, if it's an inverted pleat, it will be a box pleat on the other side. So you need to decide which way you want it on. I generally always do an inverted pleat for females' shirts and a box pleat for men's shirts. So I don't know why. That's just what I've always done. So both with inverted pleats at the back. This is the one for my daughter. So you can see... That's the inverted pleat there. And on the other side of that, it is actually a box pleat. So there's the other side, which it could have been. So that's the box pleat. And sometimes you will see that on the, um, on the outside of the shirts. Or sometimes you will see it as an inverted pleat. It will be hard to see with stripes, which is there like that. And I did actually cut the yoke um, on the bias. Okay to cut things on a bias. It's not going to stretch because the inside one is not cut on a bias. So I wouldn't be cutting both a lining and the outside yoke on the bias because you're going to get stretch in it if you do that. Because if this was just a single layer, and it's on the bias, it would stretch. Well, maybe not in this fabric, but I don't know that this fabric would stretch, but because it's so tightly woven and so, you can hear it, polyester, let's call it. So maybe you only get what you pay for, and I did not pay very much money for this fabric, and I think I got like five or six meters for $20 or $18 so quite cheap but looks really good 
looks really good and really effective. The, and it's a really pretty colour. It's a really nice light blue and white stripe. So, um, yeah, so I made this one for my daughter. As I said, cut the yoke on the bias just for a bit of effect. If you want to wear the cuffs down, the stripes go in the opposite direction. So when you're looking at this style of cuff, let's put it on. Yeah, so it's going to be like that, or you can have a really nice turn up. Now, if it was me and I was going to wear it as a turn up, I'll probably just put a little clear press stud here just to keep it nice and snug, but I won't do that unless Lucy wants it like that. So, um, yeah, kids can be very finicky and don't do anything they haven't asked you to do. So, this is that shirt. I will have inserted photos all the way through, but one of my very favorite patterns, all in easy fit shirt, if you remember, here it is here. And what I had done was I cut directly into this pattern. You can see it says size 14. And then when Lucy asked me for one, I thought she will take a bigger size than me. Um, I had to, um, I got the pattern reprinted. So I got um, the Data Society to reprint this pattern for me and I traced it off. I did not cut it out so that now I've got a pattern that I can make it for anybody because possibly one of the other girls or someone else will ask for one. So, and I did cut Lucy's, I think in a size, because she wanted it oversized. I cut it in a 22 or a 24, but I reduced the shoulders to a 20. They didn't want it to be too big and hanging off her. So even though she'll probably wear it over a T-shirt as an overshirt, you know, a shirt is very versatile. And I actually did not have a white shirt that I had made myself. I had an old one in the wardrobe. And when I looked at it, I thought, hmm, starting to fray around the inside of the collar band, with the collar stand. And um, about time I made myself a new one. And I had this sailcloth. Goodness only knows what I bought it for. And I thought I am going to make myself an all-in easy fit shirt. I know it fits. I know it works out really well. I want the one with the collar stand. I don't need to look at any instructions. I just make it because I actually don't put the pockets on anything until I've tried it on because sometimes pockets are too low for me because I tend to be short between the shoulder and the underarm. So really, really happy with this pattern. If you need to try a shirt pattern or if you're a beginner and you want to try a shirt pattern, the camp collar is naturally easier than the collar stand. And I'm not sure how they make it up because I make it, I make the collar and then I join it to the collar stand and then I join the collar stand to the shirt. I'm not sure if that's the order that Patent Emporium do it in because there are several different orders you could do things in. You could attach the collar stand and then you could, I guess you could top stitch the collar to um, the collar stand. You could slot it inside it and top stitch it. But this shirt actually has, the only top stitching it's got is on the front lapel here. And even then I probably didn't have to do that. It was going to stay closed and shut because it actually presses up quite crisply. But, um, but I sewed that down anyway. And it has no top stitching on the collar, on the collar band. I hand sew um, the inside of the collar stand to the inside neck of the shirt. So in here, 
where it joins is all hand sewn. But that's just, I guess that's probably what would be called an old fashioned way of doing it. I mean, in the old days, you actually sewed your yokes down in that fashion too, because there wasn't any such thing as the burrito method. And um, we just hand sewed it. But personally, I don't mind the hand sewing. I quite like hand sewing. Uh, as long as I've got a good light and I've got new glasses so I can see even better. Um, so the other thing I had to talk about was an event that I have purchased a ticket for. And this event is called Nerida's Big Sewing Day Out. And it's in Bright in Victoria which is uh, country rural Victoria. But if you've never been to Bright, it is one of the most beautiful places. There's Bright, there's Myrtleford, and there's all, there's a few towns that are like at the base of the mountains. Absolutely beautiful place, Bright. So this is on the 17th of February with fellow sewing enthusiasts in a fun, relaxed atmosphere. The event highlights are sewing patterns and fabrics galore, premium patterns, notions and patterns are included, as well as the opportunity to purchase more from our co-host. Now, our co-host is Micah from My Designs. So people have probably, well, if you're in Australia, I'm sure you will have heard, of Micah from My Designs, and she is in Bright. So she is hosting Nerida Hansen. Nerida Hansen will actually be there. So it's just going to be fabulous. You get a delicious lunch and you can learn their supervisors and peers will cross the floor all day, helping and assisting with your project. You can win lucky door prizes. You can get to know Nerida through lunchtime Q and A ask about her brand and inspiration behind her fabrics and sewing patterns or any topic you like. You will have connect opportunities to make amazing connections with other fellow sewers. And in the final part, it's got to keep the festivities going as we wrap up the day with a post event soiree, very flash where you will wear your latest creation, sip on refreshments, indulge in canapes, and continue to bond with newfound friends over your shared passion for sewing. So you can make the remnant top, you can make the Jolie dress, and you can make the Katarina dress or skirt. So that makes up the four. If you wanted to buy a ticket, you actually buy it through Nerida Hansen. I will put the link in below this video. And yes, it's on her site. It's not on uh, Micah's site for my, desi uh, my designs. So um, so the price includes supervised sewing demonstrations. The beginners are very welcome. You get fabrics, notions and sewing patterns. Tea, coffee, lunch, canapes, beverages. The only thing you need to bring is your own sewing machine, of course. I'm not sure how many people are in it. I've purchased my ticket. I've booked accommodation. And my husband was pretty keen to go. So I'm sure he'll find something to do for the eight hours I'm um, at my sewing conference, as he calls it. Um but so excited to be going. Um, and if people haven't um, looked up um, my design before, Micah has a lot of local artists. I remember last time I was in Bright walking past an art gallery. It was an art gallery? It was closed. Might have been like a Sunday afternoon. Um, walking past an art gallery and seeing some beautiful artwork. Then a week later, my designs actually released fabric 
with that same print on it. So she does use all local artists and has beautiful quality fabric. Really quick turnaround. So every time I've ordered from um, Micah has been really fast delivery and really great communication. So I will leave the link below to Nerida Hansen's Big Sewing Day. It's called Big Sewing Day Out. I am just looking on my computer. Nerida's Big Sewing Day Out. And I think there was one in Geelong that was in at the beginning of January, I think. And I think there's going to be one in Queensland, but when I look up, was the Queensland one like the 20, 27th of February doesn't sound right because um, that would not be a Saturday. But anyway, um, hunt around on the internet for you if you're up in Queensland because I am sure I came across that but I cannot find it again. But um, when I go on to Nerida Hansen's site, it's just automatically logging me in. So it already knows that I'm in Victoria. So it's just taking me to the Victorian ones. Um, but yes, very, very excited for that. What else am I doing? What else have I got in progress? So the first thing I haven't cut out yet, but I will, is another white shirt I'm going to make. Now this is the Celeste woven shirt by Stylark. And now this is the one princess seam styles and as you can see it's got an insert like a gore in the front there so very easy to make it fit you really really well and the fabric that I've got for this is quite a lightweight but a stretch cotton so I thought that might be really really nice in that shirt Yes, it's another white shirt. Honestly, that'll only give me two, so. And I wasn't sure what sort of closure I was gonna have. Once upon a time, I had a shirt that had this type of closure and you could actually see it like that. And that was the front closure. And so I have got some of this, I guess it's like, hook and eye tape, underwear tape, corsetry tape, I guess it's that type of thing. And so I was going to not necessarily do that, but have a look and see if that's what I was going to make. So the next thing I've got that I'm going to cut out is the Jyoti Duster jacket. And that's so different patterns. Now I bought this fabric from, this is an Indian cotton, oh no, cotton block print from the Dahlia Society. So I was going to make it in that. And I was going to do the trim in some crafting cotton that I've got. So it doesn't have very much trim that goes with it. So it sort of really just goes like that. Um, yeah, so I can't wait to make that. Had this pattern for a little while and then I saw Kristen had made hers so really excited to make that very versatile piece now the other thing I'm going to make is a bag it's a by Annie it's a yoga bag and so my sister goes to yoga so I'm going to make her this bag and she chose the fabric Huge lover of going to Paris, she is. So she chose this gorgeous fabric. Now this is directional fabric. So when I cut it out, I will be cutting out and putting a seam in the bottom of the bag so that both sides of the bag are running in the correct direction. Rather than you might make the whole piece one, I will put a seam in it. And she chose this fabric for the lining. And th these two fabrics came from Spotlight, who do have a lot of drill and a lot of um, crafting fabric. But I think this is 
This is a poly cotton, I think. Oh, it's super mature poplin. Why is it it's called super mature? It's got a very nice feel to it. This actually make a nice shirt. Um, so I've got that. I've got two zips, and they're um, buy any zips. So. I'll get to choose which colour zip I want to put in it. All the bag toggles, all of the stuff that goes with it. So I'm going to make that up for my sister. And the other thing I need to make is my Art Deco dress. Do you remember this beautiful fabric? It's all washed and ready to go. And I'm really not sure what pattern I'm going to use yet. I had printed out this pattern and it's called the Laurel Dress version 2. But because it's Art Deco, I also wanted to put what would you call it, an attached scarf in the same fabric that came around and then draped over your back. And this was what I was really waiting for because I'm going to put this on the bottom of the dress and possibly on the bottom of the tassel. I don't know if it'll be too much to put it on the bottom of the sleeve, but we shall see. So I got this. from maybe it was called remnant warehouse and maybe that's where i got the stretch white fabric from as well yes i think this came from fabric fabric remnant remnant warehouse i think it's in melbourne ordering things online but it took me a long time to find anything that I would be happy with. So it was quite an ordeal really to find something that I thought, yes, that's going to work. Uh, because there is a lot of beading out there, but some of it, oops, as you can see, that's only that long. Some of the beading, is so long. Some of it is 30 centimeters deep. And I think, wow, that's like a whole ruler. That's that deep. One, be down to my ankles, and two, it's all just too much. Don't want to take away from the fabric. So I have got that in the pipe works, as well as going through all of my dresses. And I have been wearing dresses nearly every day. I've been working on the curated closet where you document everything you wear for two weeks. And even after nine days, I realize I am happiest when I am wearing a dress. But admittedly, that's summer. And I do wear a lot of shirts as well. Um, even though the fabric of this shirt that I've got that's the same as this, um, this weird fabric, almost waterproof, I don't know. Um, I really like the way the shirt looks and so I do actually wear it quite often. I wear all of those shirts quite often. Um, and that's when I'm wearing jeans. So sometimes they're ready to wear jeans, sometimes they're jeans I've made. But when the weather's hot, loving a dress, loving my magenta, um, summer in New York dress worn that a fair few times and a couple of my Armadale dresses worn my Armadale dresses I'm just looking at my pile of ironing there and I can see when you wear lots of dresses you have lots of ironing and I can see two Armadale dresses in that ironing so I have worn them quite a bit anyway I will 
talk to you all possibly next week. I'm going to look after Mia and staying there five days, I think, while her parents go and do something. They are coming home every day, but um, then they'll need to go out again every morning. So um, I'm going to look after her. So that will be five days with Ooh, a 16 month old I'll be exhausted by the time I get back anyway everyone have a wonderful week I will leave the details of Nerida's big sewing day out down below great opportunity great opportunity to go and meet Nerida Hansen and hey make something while you're on site I am expecting an email asking which fabric I want, which pattern I want, because obviously they need to get all organised and all that sort of thing. So anyway, I'll leave it there. Oh my God, I've been gas bagging on for hours. I have a Kofi account. All of the details of all of the patterns will be at um, below this video. So please like and subscribe. And hopefully I get some sewing done between now in the weekend maybe not i'm going to look after me on thursday friday saturday sunday and monday anyway everyone have a wonderful sewing week i'll talk to you then bye